Apple's new M3 iMac is finally here and it's essentially pretty much what we all expected, except for a couple of things that would have really made it exciting, but no, Apple kept it simple and basically disappointed a lot of us tech nerds. But don't worry guys, Apple refreshed all of the literally identical iMac marketing materials on their website with brand new wallpapers, yay. Jokes aside, the reality is that Apple's target market for this iMac is the complete opposite of you and I. Apple cares about the regular folks who could care less about specs. The ones that simply decide to walk into the Apple store one day and buy a new Mac for their home office. So in this video, I'm talking directly to you techies out there because some of you are probably sitting there with your old 27 inch Intel iMac honestly getting tired of waiting for the new iMac Pro with a larger, more multitasking capable display. So what I'm gonna answer in this video is if you should finally pull the trigger on this new M3 iMac with the 24 inch display or wait even longer for that larger iMac. So let's get started. The good news is that the new iMac still has the same $1,300 starting price as before, but you need to proceed with caution because the M3 chip does in fact come with a binned eight core GPU at the base price, which didn't show up in the new M3 MacBook Pro. So some people thought that Apple was no longer binning the base chip, but they are for the iMac. And another difference is that Apple this year gave the M3 MacBook Pro 512 gigs of SSD storage at the base price, which basically means it comes with two NAND flash storage chips, which I've confirmed by looking at this teardown shot from Apple's October event keynote. And this essentially means that they've fixed the issue that happened on the base model M2 MacBook Pro, which only came with a single NAND chip, which basically ruined the speed of the memory swap SSD feature, which essentially ruined multitasking performance and made it slower than the old M1 MacBook Pro in a variety of cases. But unfortunately, the new base 24 inch iMac does in fact come with only 256 gigs of storage, which means that it likely only has a single NAND chip. So if you love multitasking and doing productivity work at the same time, you'll likely see a performance drop compared to the old M1 iMac. In that case, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade to 512 gigs of storage to avoid any issues and get those dual NAND chips, as well as upgrading to that 10 core GPU and getting those two extra ports and gigabit ethernet, but now you're left with a $1,700 price tag. But wait, Apple didn't give the M3 chip 12 gigs of RAM like we speculated, so we're stuck with only eight gigs, which many agree isn't enough for techies, so you've gotta upgrade that as well. So now the question becomes, is the new 24 inch iMac with the M3 chip worth spending $1,900 on? But before I get into that, I've gotta talk about Proton VPN from our sponsor Proton, which hides your IP address and fully secures your data while browsing the web, including their integrated ad blocker NetShield, which also stops online trackers. It's used by privacy conscious individuals around the world, allowing many people to safely browse the web and access banned social networks. But let's be real, most of you will probably be using it to stream movies, shows, and even play games that are restricted or banned in your country. Proton VPN is easy to use, fast, and has over 2,900 servers in over 60 countries. And right now, you can get up to 60% off the 30-month plan for Proton's Black Friday deal, so you'll only pay $3.99 per month. So check out Proton VPN using the links in the description below. Now, getting back to the question of if the new 24-inch iPhone Mac is worth spending $1,900 on. Sure, you now get all of the new media engine features like AV1 decode and a bunch of other GPU features to trace all of your rays, as well as Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, but not much else has changed. You've got the same display as before, the same speakers, the same single external display support, and yes, the same lightning magic peripherals instead of getting updated to USB-C, which was the one thing that we all wanted. But no, 
It's basically the same iMac as before, with the same colors, but with M3. So here is my honest advice. If you're looking at this iMac from a consumer perspective, just getting a reliable all-in-one desktop Mac that's simple to set up and use for your home office, for regular web browsing, business-related work, and a solid homework and YouTube machine for your kids, then simply buy the base model for $1,300 and call it good. Now, if you're a techie and you care about all the performance and other upgraded features, then I would steer you away from this iMac and point you to two different options. Number one would be to absolutely buy one of the new M3 MacBook Pros based on how much budget you have, seeing as the base M3 model is a killer value for what you get with the new beautiful 14-inch redesign. Number two would be to keep waiting for that larger iMac because yes, we've been seeing multiple reports that Apple is still working on it, both from Mark Gurman and Ming-Chi Kuo. First of all, Kuo recently updated his prediction to state that the higher end 32 inch mini LED iMac Pro isn't coming until 2025, which hints at it being based on the M4 family of chips. And yes, he believes it's gonna have a 32 inch massive display. Now last year, Mark Gurman believed that the new larger iMac would come with M3 Pro and M3 Max chips, which would imply that we could see them as soon as the spring of 2024. However, he has recently updated his predictions, mentioning that early work has been started on an iMac with a display larger than 30 inches. And when he words things like this, it usually means a product is a couple of years away. So with that said, we might not actually actually see the iMac Pro until 2025. Now, in my opinion, even though I'm going against the leaks, I think it actually makes sense for Apple to create two more large iMacs. The first one would be a 27 inch iMac, which has a design that's identical to the 24 inch design, except that it would be thicker while still being proportionate due to the larger size. This one would likely come with the option of an M3 or M3 Pro chip, or if that's not enough, M3 Pro or M3 Max, and it would all once again be inside of the chin, which would now be thicker and longer due to the larger display size. Because of that, there just might not be enough thermal headroom in the chin for the M3 Max, but who knows? And then a bit later down the line, Apple would release the massive 32 inch iMac Pro, which would come with, let's say the M4 Max and maybe have the option of the M4 Ultra. This one is not gonna have a chin, being an edge to edge display design similar to the Pro Display XDR. And the only reason I think it'll be possible for it to get the M4 Ultra is if Apple releases the M3 Extreme stream chip in the Mac Pro, which is basically four Max dies put together. I know this is just wild speculation for now, but I do wanna point you guys to the iMac prototypes leaked anonymously on MacRumors forums, showing that Apple was testing multiple 27 inch Apple Silicon iMacs. And my point is that if Apple originally planned to only have a 32 inch iMac Pro, then why even consider testing so many 27 inch prototypes unless they want to have have a regular 27 inch iMac. But anyway, answering the original question, my advice is that if you need a reliable all-in-one computer for your home office or for your kids, just get the base iMac model and get an upgrade or two if you really want. But for those who need more performance, either get the new M3 MacBook Pros or keep waiting for the higher end iMacs that are bound to come within the next couple of years. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe above for our in-depth testing next week and check out one of those two videos right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.